bothered by that at all. <laughs> Question number eight, the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, does he stand by his statement on Saturday that, quote, many of the Kiwi build houses that we're building don't require the government to spend a dollar? And that's why we're doing it through a buy off the plan scheme, end quote. The Honourable Phil Twyford. Yes, in the context it was made, all of the Kiwi Build channels leverage private sector investment. That's the point of the programme. What actions will the Crown need to take under its underwrite agreement if any of the 211 houses underwritten in Wanaka cannot be sold at the price points agreed with the developer? Uh, under the underwrite agreement, they'll buy them. Is the business case for Kiwi Build buying off the plans reasonable in assuming the Crown will face an average cost of between $20,000 and $50,000 per house delivered via the buying off the plans initiative related to unsold houses, a cost of up to $1.8 billion over the life of the programme? Well, that's based on very conservative risk <coughs> modelling. Coffee. Why is the government leveraging private sector investment through buying off the plans? The buying off the plans business case shows that between $3.7 billion and $4.7 billion worth of KiwiBuild homes will be built over the life of the programme. And because KiwiBuild is only part of any development, it will enable the construction of approximately $5.5 billion worth of additional homes. It also incentivises the construction of more affordable homes rather than larger homes that earn the developers a bigger margin. Supplementary. What reports has he seen from developers about the benefits of KiwiBuild's buying off the plans programme? Well, Mr Speaker, one developer, Shane Brealey, from NZ Living, who is undertaking Kiwi Build apartment developments in Onehunga and Otahuhu, said recently that Kiwi Build enabled him to get underway faster and with reduced costs. Kiwi Build has allowed him to go from the purchase of land to construction in just two months, when it would normally take around a year, with much more certainty as to whether those developments would even proceed. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he have confidence in the assumption made in the buying off the plans business case that the Kiwi Build Capital Fund could be depleted by up to $1.8 billion to cover the cost of underwriting? Well, that's a, um, a high-end risk scenario as part of a modelling. It's not a, it's not a projection that one could be confident in. It's one part of a theoretical modelling exercise, and it happens to be the high-risk, high-cost end of the modelling. David Seymour. What advantage does the government bring to the housing sector through KiwiBuild, other than the sovereign right to tax about five million people? The government brings to uh, the housing affordability crisis the ability to use its balance sheet and its buying power to incentivise modest, affordable starter homes that the market has failed to build over the last 10 years. How does he propose having the Kiwi Build Capital Fund deliver projects, such as the one announced in Poirua recently, if the fund is consumed covering the cost of the underwrite scheme? Well, it won't be consumed by the cost of the underwrite scheme. The capital fund is there to sustain the delivery of Kiwi Build, first through the um, buying off the plans and underwrite channel, secondly through the land for housing program, within which um, the Crown makes available land to developers who agree to build Kiwi Build uh, and public housing on it, and then pay for that land at the end of the development project. Um, the Kiwi Build fund will also be sustaining. Uh, the building and of uh, new Kiwi build homes for sale to first home buyers in large scale projects that the Urban Development Authority will run in places like Porirua and at the Unitec development. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, to proceed with Mr Seymour's question in the interests of accuracy, are there five million New Zealanders paying tax in this country? <laughs> 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 
Or, 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 or the, 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 I, I, I know, but if, if, if we require accuracy uh, from, all, from all questions, we'll be authenticating all day. Uh, and this is not an area. We, I, I think everyone in the House knows that Mr. Seymour was wrong. We don't need to rub it in. But, uh, Mr. Speaker? A point of order, David Seymour. Mr. Speaker, I think if you review the Hansard, uh, you'd say the right to tax approximately 5 million people. Uh, I never implied that there were 5 million taxpayers. And frankly, I think it's wrong for you to enter the debate and say that I was wrong. Well, I respect the member's view. Question number nine, Dr Shane Reddy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. 